Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome to another Monday with Megan video. Today, I wanna to talk with you guys about just loving the home that you're in. Um, as you can see right now, we're busy putting some love into our home by repainting the cabinets and stuff. So here, why don't I look this way so you don't have to see all that. Anyway, before we get into that though, you guys have been asking about my tea-infused water, and I figured, you know what, I'll just show it to you right now quick, and then we'll get all cozy and get to chatting. Um, it's really not a recipe at all. You guys make it so complicated, but I got so many questions, I figured I'll just show it here in detail so you know what you're doing. So I like to use these um, fruit tea samplers, and this one comes with raspberry zinger, country peach passion, wild berry zinger, true blueberry, and black cherry berry. Um, you can use any tea, really. I, I'm a lover of like frozen chais, but they're not good like this because I don't know. I don't like cold vanilla cinnamon water. It's not good at all. So you just get your cup of water, whatever. I'm using a mason jar here. And then pick whatever flavor you want. I think today I'm gonna do the peach passion. It's just what I'm in the mood for. Um, and yeah, any fruity flavor is really good. You just take a tea bag, right like this. Throw it in there. And then I like to get a straw. I have some bamboo ones that I like, or these plastic ones are from Ikea. They're like the thick straws. Anyway, just put it in there. Put your lid on. And these lids are just like the plastic jar lids that you can get, and my husband drove a hole for me. Add on there. And now this tea is gonna slowly infuse into my water, make it colorful and it's gonna taste really good, and but it's gonna be very light and subtle. It's not gonna feel like you're drinking juice or something. And if it starts to taste too strong, it's probably because you're not drinking it fast enough. Like, if it's sitting here on the counter all day, it's gonna get stronger and stronger, but the theory is if you're you know, drinking throughout the day, you're gonna have to keep refilling your water. And a tea bag is good for all day long. Usually um, by the end of the evening, it loses its flavor then, and I throw it away. And Maybe I'll do it the next day. Maybe I'll do fresh fruit. Maybe I'll just drink plain water. But yeah, I've really been loving tea infused water and it's just super, super easy. It's like one step. Throw a tea bag in. Mmm, I can already taste the peach. But anyway, now that we got that taken care of, you, gra you guys grab your tea, I'll grab mine. And let's just go into the living room, get comfy, and chat. Okay, let's get cozy here and chit chat a little bit. Look, my water's already getting tinted. By the way, is it is it true that um, it's a stereotype that Europeans drink their water like room temperature and Americans always have ice? I'm just curious, I've heard of that, and is that true? I have a list here on my computer I'm gonna be referring to, but I've been adding to this for a while now, ever since I thought of shooting this video. I think we're all very, very blessed if we have a home to love in the first place. And I know this video could be a little bit sensitive because we all come from different places. Currently, I'm living in a fixer-upper house that um, is dated but very functional. It's completely fine. Um, I often feel vulnerable putting myself out there on YouTube for everybody to see my house because it's definitely not photogenic in every area. It's um, very old and dated in some parts. Um, it's not always clean. Um, but I realize that, you know what, if people want to judge me, they'll always find something to judge. Um, if I had the most amazing, beautiful house, people would probably judge me for that too. Yeah, I am happy with our house. We're the only ones that actually have to live there. And I know we're on a journey to make this home our own. Um, if you would like to see our house, I did do a house tour and I will link that up above. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what my house looks like. Um, these concepts apply to no matter if you have a really nice house or you know are just renting and it's not at all really what you like at all. And this video is also very sensitive to the time that we're in. Most of these tips, if not all of them, will not cost you any money. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited to chat about that today. And one thing that has definitely helped me out with loving my home more is just figuring out what my personal decor style is. And something that's helped me with that a lot is Skillshare. And this video today is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community and so many of you have signed up for this already. And even if you aren't planning to stay with it for the long term, you definitely should sign up anyway and you'll get two months free. And these would be a perfect two months to get it. But I personally love Skillshare and continue to talk about them because they've added a lot to my life. And one way is they've helped me to just like feel more confident with how I do style my home or um, organize my home and decorate my home. There's a lot of different classes on there you can take. I've taken several on interior design and color palettes. A lot of you guys have been asking me about like color theory and stuff like that. I actually used to teach that to high schoolers, so I will link a few of the classes down below that I really enjoy, and you guys can get started with those. You just gotta go in there and look around. You guys will get sucked in, I know it. 
So I just thought I'd throw that in there if you guys are looking for a good, tangible way to yeah, improve the way your house looks. And the first 1,000 of you guys that click on the link down below are going to get Skillshare free for two months. And then if you decide you don't like it, not going to happen, or you're just done with it, you can totally just you know unsubscribe from that completely. So yeah, click on that link down below. Do it soon though because it's only the first 1,000 of you and you will get two months free of Skillshare Premium. But anyway, decorating your home is only one way to make you fall in love with your house. Um, I want to give you a whole bunch more. Starting with the first one, which is just tidy up your house. And that seems like really obvious. You probably knew I was going to say that. But I definitely love my home so much more when things are in their place and it just looks so less cluttered. If you have time to clean, that's great too. I definitely think just the tidying up can go a long way. But if you have time to clean, that's always great too. There's nothing like seeing marks on your carpet from where your vacuum went and just smelling your clean house. But yeah, so that won't cost any money, just a little bit of time. Another thing you could do is just put up some a poster or some artwork, maybe even artwork your kids did, just adding some color. Um, to some people that will feel cluttery, to other people that's gonna feel like cheerful and happy and homey. Um, so just know what type of person you are, but I myself like to design stuff on canva.com. I talk about that a lot. I'll put that down below too. A lot of you can't quite understand what I'm saying. It's Canva, right there on the screen I put it. I um, mean, it's completely free. You can upgrade if you want, but I just like to do that to design different posters and yeah, just different little pieces of artwork. I love how like the look of just simple black and white line drawing and you can just put some washi tape on it and hang it up right on the wall and it's so removable, you can switch it out. Even just like a pretty wall calendar or something can do a lot. You can do that right now if you guys have a printer at home, it doesn't cost any money. Um, just find a printable online and there you go. Move a piece of furniture or decor to a different part of your house is another way to just fall more in love or to see your space differently. Um, Ashley from Till Vacuum Joe's Park does so good with that. She like switches whole rooms around. She's like goals. I can put her channel down below. But yeah, just switching things around makes you like fall in love with your home all over again. Another thing that I do sometimes, this seems like a really gimmicky thing, but it so works for me, is just like to turn out the lights and light a candle. It's amazing. It just like hides all the dust and you don't even... Yeah, I don't know. It just gives your a whole different perspective of your house. It feels like cozier and maybe even smaller and cleaner. I don't know. <laughs> another tip would be to light a candle. Um, another tip after that would be to make your house just smell good in general. And you can do that in a lot of different ways. Some of you guys are so into your essential oils. If you love essential oils, go for that. I like to light a candle. Even just like cleaning a little bit will make everything smell good. Make an apple pie, put that in the oven. Or um, yeah, just having something going in the crock pot can just make your home feel homier. I don't know. Am I, is this sounding gimmicky to you guys? I don't know. These are just some tips that I thought of that I can feel a little more in love with my house, even though it's like in the middle of renovation projects all the time. Um, and just, I'm going to take a little break from my list here to address that. Um, I think, so one of you was asking, how do I love my home when it's like almost condemned? It's like in such a bad state that I'm allowed to live here for free, paying no rent at all. Um, and that is really, really hard. Um, and somebody else asked me too, how do I love my home that I'm in that I'm renting it's like covered in ugly wallpaper and that's really hard too but again I think it's coming down to just putting your own personal touch where you can and keeping things clean maybe for the person who said that their house is really dated and they're only renting they can't do a lot of cosmetic changes is there one spot in your house that you really really love I know when we moved into this place I didn't really like anything about it but I love the sun porch the sun porch was just like open to the I don't know, the outdoors and there was no decorations. It was super dated, but it was like quaint, super dated, if you know what I mean. So I just put some plants out there and that was one place I could go when the whole like construction zone of the rest of my house just drove me nuts. I would go out there and I would sit and do my computer work there or read stories to the kids out there. Just try to be out there as much as possible because it felt like my house. So if, the, if you're in a renter situation like that, I'm sure there's like one corner or one spot in your house that you really truly like or can make yourself like. Um, and just make your own personal stamp. Even just putting your own favorite chair or something like that in a corner can make it feel like yours. And the lady that was asking about living in an almost condemned home, um, I think part of that is just letting go of what other people think right now. And also remember, whenever you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. Uh, and that works also and vice versa. Right now you're saying no to a nice house so that you can like pile up cash for later or you can be home with your children and not have to be working another job. Think about why you're sacrificing that way. Why are you living that way? And I think it will make you um, just not dread it or hate it quite as much. Yeah, and just try not to let other people's opinions bring you down. You're not decorating your house for anybody else. And that's hard for somebody like me to say with I'm putting my whole life out there for you guys to see and to judge 
And um, I think the longer I'm on YouTube though, the more I'm just okay with, you know what, this is my style, this is what I like, this is what I can afford or can't afford. Um, this is my choice and I love to hear other people's opinions sometimes, but at the end of the day, me and my family are the ones that are living there and so we're just gonna roll with, yeah, what's best for us. And I think it's also important to remember that no matter where we are on the totem pole, your house is a dream to somebody else. You know, you're living the dream to somebody else somewhere. Um, and I, I think it doesn't always put everything into perspective, but a lot of the time it can help you just feel a little more grateful for what you have. And my parents always said too, if you are a young married person or just getting married, I know there's some of you out there. I'm so glad that you guys watch my channel. But something that my mom always said was, you can't expect to start out where we left off, meaning like my parents. You know, they work 30 years for what they have now. It's not like we need to move out and start our own lives and expect to have the same comforts that we always had at home. You might have to sacrifice for a while and have slow internet or no garage to park your car in. Yeah, that's just how it is. Anyway, moving on, another tip that I have for you guys is to just open a window and let some fresh air in that's gonna make your house smell better and just let some light in and, I don't know, just freshen things up and makes things not feel so stale. Another tip is to get rid of something. Sometimes when you look at stuff, you think, oh, what can I add to make this better? What can I add? Sometimes the answer is just to get rid of stuff. It gives you a whole different look. Every year after Christmas, I will take down all my Christmas decor and then not put anything else up at all for a little while and just enjoy like the clean, minimal look and minimal is a style, guys. Um, it's completely fine to just not have much at all um, or just a few key pieces that you really, really love. Um, as I sit here beside this <laughs> very, very kitty bookshelves with lots of little things on. But hey, I did not spend much money at all on that stuff. A lot of it was collected and some of it is like very useful functional things like the games and the books. Anyway, another tip I have for you is to bring the outside in. Just pick some flowers right now. I have some really pretty tulips sitting on my table that were completely for free. The, they were just out there in the flower bed and I cut them off, put them on my kitchen table and it adds a little bit of color. Um, right now there's so many beautiful blooming trees. Cut a branch off, put it in your kitchen. Um, it'll look really beautiful for a little bit till it makes a big mess and then you'll have to get rid of it. Winter time there's evergreens you can bring in. Speaking of evergreens, I need to take down. I have dead evergreens up here on my <laughs> mantle. Yeah. They gotta go. Another tip is to paint something. Paint is, if you wanna spend a little bit of money, is the most probably affordable yet impactful way to change a space up a little bit. Paint something, it doesn't have to be a wall even. It can be just a, a wooden piece of furniture or a picture frame. You know that maybe your picture frames were all black edges and now you wanna paint them another color. Get some old spray paint out and spray paint them gold. You don't have to necessarily be creative, but be resourceful with what you have and how can you change things up if you're really feeling like a space could use a little bit of a facelift. Another tip that I would say would probably work for some of you is to display family pictures. You don't have to spend a lot of money for this either. A place that I like to go, I'm just giving you guys lots of little tips here that I've learned over the years. Another place that I like to go is to, oh, what's it called, Paraboo Press. Paraboo Press will give you, I think it's the first 25 prints free. I actually have a bunch of them on my wall over here. They're um, very sturdy cardstock. And you can get four by fours and five by five inch squares. If I guess this is only in the US, I'm not sure. But it, um, yeah, it does not have to be expensive to get some family pictures in your home. And it just puts like a personal touch there and nobody's gonna look at that and say, oh, that's ugly. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's your family. Another tip is to fix all your little annoyances. Maybe there's like a door that is always creaking and you just never got around to, you know, spraying some WD-40 on it. Or maybe your shower curtain has just been disgusting and gross for so long and you just need to replace it. Well, get it taken care of. You know, it's the things like that that's just kind of like great in the back of your mind. And it can just like wear away at you after a while if it gets too long. And it's not stuff that has to get done now, you know, but it just like, they start to build up after a while. So try to knock some of those things off your list. By the way, if you're liking this video, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. This is just like a casual chitty chat. Monday with Megan type of video. Uh, these are the types of videos that are great to pop on while you're working or maybe you just wanna sit down and get cozy with me. Another tip would be to rearrange the furniture. I remember as a kid, my mom would rearrange the furniture for us like every year at spring cleaning. Um, we could get to help figure out how we wanted to, you know, put the furniture in our room, where we wanted our bed and our end tables and stuff like that. It was always so exciting and it felt so different to wake up and you'd be facing a different direction and it was, <laughs> You know, I think inside all of us there is that little kid that just it feels like fresh or something when you move some things around. And um, I think 
there is also something to be said for once you figure out the best functioning of a space to like leave it that way. But something like a bedroom or even a living room sometimes, there's so many different configurations that you can do. And if there isn't one way that's the best, maybe just try switching some furniture around within a room. Another tip to go along with that is to swap pillows around. Maybe take some pillows from your bedroom and put them in the living room or vice versa. There's no rule about what has to go where. It's a good idea, something else you'll probably learn if you take any of the Skillshare classes. It's a good idea to have like a consistent feel or tone throughout your whole house. So if you do that, a lot of your rooms, they're not gonna look all the same, but they'll probably have a lot of the same color elements in them and stuff, and that'll make it really easy to swap pillows around or even other like accent pieces. Another tip is to add or remove a rug. Um, it's just amazing how a little area rug that you can find for, you know, $5 at a closeout store um, can just really change an entryway. At our old house, I was getting sick of our bathroom. I totally got rid of our bathroom rugs, fully intending to buy new ones eventually, and I just never got around to it. And after a while, I realized I actually liked it better without rugs. And now to this day, like bathroom rugs gross me out. I'll probably never own bathroom rugs again. <laughs> if you own bathroom rugs, that's totally fine. It's just a personal preference. Anyway, so it's just, yeah, an area rug taken away or added in can be really cool. And you could even up this up a notch and like switch area rugs from one room to another room. Another tip I would have for you is to get yourself a house plant. Unless that stresses you out, then definitely don't do that. But I just love how house plants make nature feel like it's coming into your house obviously. <laughs> Another super easy tip is to make your bed. I am not a bed maker, but the weeks that I do, like when I start to make my bed, I'll almost feel like I have to every day then. So it'll go like weeks where I'll make my bed, make my bed. Oh, another tip for loving your home is to kill all the flies in it. There's just like one fly flying around. I don't know why. Springtime in the country, guys. <laughs> another thing that I suggest is to fix any chipped paint or Hang on, I can't film with that fly. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> anyway, what was I saying? This is why it's good to have an outline so I don't forget stuff. Um, fixing chipped paint and nicks in your wood. I have a marker that's the same exact color as like the window trim in this house. And I'll just go around and just color in any nicks that there are and they just instantly disappear and everything looks newer and fresher. Same thing goes with trim that's painted or walls if there's like something like a nick on your wall or something after you have a whole bunch of them. Like one nick is okay, you can live with that. But after you have a bunch of nicks, it can get like annoying and just starts to feel like really battered and beaten up. And yeah, kids are hard on walls, I'm learning, my goodness. So yeah, if you even have a whole patch you wanna, you know, fix up, go for it and it'll make a big difference and you probably don't have to spend any money at all because you probably have the paint sitting in a can in the basement. Hopefully, because it can sometimes be a bugger to try to <laughs> match it up later. Another little tip I think is cool is to make artwork or find artwork that includes the color palette for your house or for your room that you're decorating. There's so many different ideas. I highly suggest you go on Pinterest and Google that and just look up different like color palette artwork and stuff. I know Shara Stevens from Kinwoven Home. She's really big on having like a piece of artwork in your room that includes all the colors from your color scheme for that room. Another tip I have for you is to maybe redo a piece of furniture. You could reupholster a piece of furniture or just repaint a piece. I know right now if you're really into the farmhouse style, and you have like a wooden piece you can paint everything except the top maybe sand down the top and stain it a color that you like or just change out the hardware our kitchen right now we're kind of doing that too we're painting it and we're putting new hardware on and you know a new kitchen would cost us over twenty thousand dollars to put in but because we're just buying new paint and hardware and some light fixtures hopefully we're going to keep it under 500 bucks we'll see but somebody who's really great at redoing furniture would be mary yoder from white cottage company the white cottage company on youtube i'll link her channel down below too she is a mennonite as well but she does so like her channel just blew up because she is so talented with the farmhouse style if that's your thing she does a lot of trash to treasure videos and just making furniture go from like blah to like beautiful and yeah it doesn't have to cost a lot of money at all um and these are all just like quick little fixes that you can try to do they're not going to totally rechange your whole home or anything but i think it's important to realize that the best way to fall in love with your home again is just to look at it through eyes of gratefulness. Sure, times are just unknown right now, but and we're stuck at home a lot, but aren't you so grateful to have that home? Aren't you so glad to be around the people that you love? Just a perspective shift sometimes helps a lot. So I wanted to just like bounce some ideas off of you guys, and you guys were some bouncing some ideas off of me. I had a few things I just wanted to go over here that I found on Instagram quickly. How do you stop clutter and simplify whilst managing kids. I have so much stuff. 
I think sometimes we're afraid to like do dramatic things, but kids are a lot more adaptable than you think. I don't think it would be too shocking to just like go through your stuff and like I'm thinking the toy room makes this specifically and just like getting get a whole bunch of stuff that you don't think the children use anymore or there's not there's pieces missing or it's broken and either trashing or donating those things or even just putting them in a box in the attic. I know what you mean by like clutter with kids. Like kids, kids just take a lot of equipment and stuff. And I will say like one thing I love for my bathroom cabinets is just nobody goes in there and looks at them. They're not by any means Pinterest worthy. But going to Dollar Tree and getting the clear plastic shoe boxes and then labeling one like bandages and one pain meds and one bug spray, you know, that kind of stuff. It can totally um, just give you homes for everything. If you know what I mean? Because kids do take a lot of paraphernalia I'm learning. I only got two of them. Oh, I love what Emily Stoll 12 says, pick a style that you love and always shop your home before buying new things. I think right now a lot of us are being forced to, sh to shop our home because at least for me, I love to do like the Burlington and the TJ Maxx and the Ross shopping where you never know what you're gonna find and it's always usually a pretty good deal and we can't do that right now. But you know what, there's a lot of stuff that I have down in my basement. You know, maybe it was originally designed as a candle holder, but what if I would use it, you know, as a candy dish or whatever, just like repurposing things, spray painting things. Some people were mentioning like not loving the area you're in and that can be hard. Um, I totally get it. But I think it's like focus on the advantages of the area you're in. A lot of us don't stay at the same place our whole lives. Someday you'll probably move to another area um, or another street even. Think about what you will miss once you do move. Um, maybe you're living in a small tiny apartment but you can like walk to everything. Everything is so close. You're probably gonna miss that someday when you live out in the woods and you're in privacy and nobody's around you then you're gonna have to drive 15 or 20 minutes to get anywhere. You know, there's always a pro and a con to a big house or a small house. I actually love living in a small house, like cleaning wise. My cleaning day was like a couple hours in the morning. Now, I could never even get it all clean in one day. Like, it takes more than that, so. But yeah, just think about what someday if you move, what are you gonna miss? And maybe that'll help you enjoy where you're at now a little bit more. Make your space work for you. I totally, totally agree with that. So many of you were saying about how I should pull my sofas away from the wall. You know, it would look better. Um, by the way, if you did not see my living room tour, I will link that in the cards and down below as well because you guys definitely want to see it. It's beautiful. That fly came back. Are you kidding me? Anyway, but for our family and how we live, it just functions like it's best to have them up against the wall so we have more space in the middle. And you know, you don't, there's certain design rules and stuff out there, but at the end of the day, do what works and functions best for your family. Don't feel the pressure from some rule you heard somewhere or some design tip that you think you have to follow. Oh, Stacy Yoder. She is over in Asia and she said the same tip that I did. One thing I find um, is to take one room and turn it into a place you can really enjoy and, and relax and enjoy being in. That, yes, exactly. Um, Faith K. Watley asks, how do you cultivate a feeling of permanence and a home base in a rental or temporary house? And yeah, I think it just comes down to those personal touches. And probably if you know you're gonna be moving around a lot to stay minimal. My husband, he grew up in a family that they moved pretty often um, just with like job changes and like he became a preacher and stuff. And so they moved around a couple times and my mom-in-law just learned to like be minimal because she didn't wanna be hanging up a hundred things on her walls every time they moved to a new house. Some of you guys might be military or um, yeah, just like students or something and you're moving around a lot. Just minimal is better. Have a few key pieces that you really like. How can I make my tiny space appear bigger and have more storage? Um, wow, that takes creativity. Don't be afraid to use spaces underneath your bed, sofas, um, above your cabinets, places like that. If you have any space that you'd like to put stuff but you're afraid people will see it, get like cute storage boxes and put stuff in there. Um, declutter so you don't have as much stuff. But I think uh, there's a lot of different tips to make a house look bigger. Um, our first home that we lived in for the first six years was super small. So there was a few things that I did like putting the curtains from floor to ceiling, um, painting a lot of things white um, or light colors, a lot of good lighting, not too much furniture so that it feels like you know a garage sale inside your house. Yeah, there's lots of little tips and um, that would probably be a whole video on its own, just with making your house look bigger or even just feel bigger. Red Phillips 1331 asks, how do you love your home that needs work, but you're unable to afford the changes right now? And I totally feel you. Um, first of all, it's your perspective. Another tip I would say as well is to stop following accounts that make you feel ungrateful for what you have. I love seeing beautiful spaces that I'll never be able to afford um, just to like think, hmm, how could I get that look for less? Like that type of thing. Yeah, I've never been in a place of life where you could just have whatever I wanted, you know, money was no object. But I think that has 
there's good points to that too because then you have to be creative and I guess the less money you have the more creative you have to be and I think another idea would be if you have a home that you just can't update you don't have money for it now is maybe sell something you do have just so that you can afford some paint to yeah just freshen up your space I feel like paint can go a long long way also go garage sailing you could be amazed at what you would find at a garage sale I have some really impressive finds from yard sales that I found. And I did make a video about that as well, about some of my favorite thrifted items. And I know right now we can't go thrifting, but maybe if you're watching this video later, you'll be able to do that. And yeah, I just can't wait till we can garage sale again. I love this question. Brenda Berkey says, is it better to figure out exactly what you want for a room or decorate slowly as you find things? I think for me, the key is to look at your room and decide what cannot change. What things do you have to work around? Like you know, the shape of the room, the height of the ceilings, the placement of the windows, you know, if you have a brick fireplace, you could paint it, but I highly recommend seeing if there's another option first. I love painted fireplaces though, but yeah, you can see a little bit of brick right there. We decided to keep it natural and I really, really like it. But yeah, just work with the personality, I like to call it, of your room first and see what's gonna stay. And then I would say good jump off of that if there's anything that you think, oh yeah, I know I want this flooring with that, or you know, the flooring's gotta stay, so since the flooring has to stay, um, I'm gonna repaint the walls so that you know it looks better together or whatever. Figure out your parameters first, what can't change, and then jump from there. I have never really just like bought everything at once and redesigned everything at once. It's always been like a little bit of a process. And I like to start, I'm gonna be sharing with you my kitchen remodel soon. I like to start with like the biggest changes first, um, like the paint color and things like that, and then work from there. Rebecca Goshirt asks for experience and tips and tricks for houseplants. Um, honestly, don't buy a houseplant you're not willing for it to die on you. <laughs> like, don't get too personally attached because you're never going to be guaranteed that it's going to live. So far, I've had really good luck. Follow the directions with it, and I would say don't buy anything that you can't just water like once a week or like some succulents and stuff. You don't even need it that often, but like that's what I do. Every Saturday, I just go around and water all my plants at one shot and move on with my life and it's just like you know a once a week thing and I leave them alone other than that sometimes I'll pick off dead leaves or something but I think when you like love on them too much that's when they die sometimes. Fern Guile also asks any tips on keeping up with mess and chores when you have two two and under? I tried something and it failed that's why you guys didn't hear about it but I made myself a whole cleaning like schedule okay every day I'm gonna do this 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 and this and I had everything on rotation so that it all got done you know once a month or twice a month or every week depending when I needed it to get done and I hated it I hated it so much I gave up in the middle of the second week I did not like a paper telling me what to do every day like I want to see the dirt and clean the dirt not like okay well I have to leave the dirt in the bathroom because I'm gonna have to go clean the bedrooms today that's on the list I like the idea of cleaning a little bit every day and not having a cleaning day um, I used to think that would drive me nuts because then your house isn't all cleaned at once but I found that if you do it like a little bit every day your house actually feels clean all the time um, it's just like a weird concept but that did not work for me to have a cleaning schedule, but for this next month in May, I want to try to do like a cleaning checklist and just like get it all done, you know, within the month and I can do it on whatever days I feel the need to do it. Yeah, so I will report back about that. But yeah, I definitely think a tip that I found is just cleaning a little bit every day. Don't have a cleaning day, especially if you have like a lot of square footage. How to freshen up your living space so you're not bored with it. That's from Danny9216. I would say with that, um, Decorating for the holidays can really help. Um, I decorate for mainly fall, Christmas, or like winter time, and then the rest of the year, so just like three. And I haven't even decorated in this house yet because there's no point in decorating a construction zone, that's what I always say. But I will at some point. Um, I think that can help a lot. How to repair your home for a newborn? One, I would say declutter, like crazy. Like that's one of the first things I would do because babies take a lot of stuff. And also the more stuff you have, the more things you have to worry about them putting in your mouth. Also, you know, baby-proof stuff, put locks on doors and things like that. Um, and if you don't get it done right away, it's fine. They're not mobile right away, but if you can get any of that done ahead of time, that is wonderful. Any painting projects you want to get done, get it done before your baby is mobile because painting with children is, like, impossible. you got to do it while they're napping or sleeping. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this discussion. I know it got a little bit longer than I was intending to. I thought this would just be a quick little video, but I got chatty again. I value this channel and like the community that we have here more than ever. I appreciate so much those of you that I see your names every week and you're leaving comments and talking to me and just, it really lifts my spirits, guys. You have no idea how much. Anyway, so I invite you if you stuck around to the end and you are not subscribed yet, you probably want to subscribe because most of my videos are a lot more 
shall we say, like produced than this. This is just like a super casual one, but sometimes those are the best, kind of the raw, just chit chat videos. So I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you on Thursday.